Paramasugadam, Kevalam Nyanamurtim, Dundvatitam Gaganashadisham, Tadvamasya Rilaksham, Vikam Nityam Vimalamachalam, Sarvadi Sakshi Bhutam, Bhavatitam Trigunarahitam, Sadgurum Tam Namami. Hi, this is Manitya Ovyananda. Today I want to share with you an interesting article. Uh, Swamiji himself actually shared this article with us, and he didn't say much, he just shared it. But when I was reading this article, <clears throat> I was very surprised. Um, it's called, Scientists Claim That Quantum Theory Proves Consciousness Moves to Another Universe at Death. Now it's funny, because this thing was just written January 11th, 2018. And scientists claim is the big thing I find funny. So there's this guy, uh, the scientist, and he's talking about all of these points that are already in the Vedas and Agamas. It's funny because all the points were written tens of thousands of years ago by the ancient rishis and the ancient civilization of uh, the Vedic tradition. And here now, these people are all of a sudden saying, oh, I, we think we have this new theory. And Swamiji even says, now only barely, even now, you know, Western science, they're not able to catch up. And it's true, because if you read this, um, his name is Dr. Robert Lenza. Uh, I thought there was another name also here. He says that Lanza points to the structure of the universe itself and the laws, forces, and constants of the universe appear to be fine-tuned for life, implying intelligence existed prior to matter. He also claims that space and time are not objects or things, but rather tools are of our animal understanding. Lanza says that we carry space and time around with us like turtles with shells, meaning that when the shell comes off, space and time, we still exist. The theory implies that death of consciousness simply does not exist. It only exists as a thought because people identify themselves with their body. They believe that the body is going to perish sooner or later, thinking their consciousness will disappear too. If the body generates consciousness, then the consciousness dies when the body dies. Uh, so he goes on, to say that Lanza also believes multiple universes can exist simultaneously. Uh, but anyway, the funny thing I find uh, is that I just, in fact, recorded a video uh, like a week ago. And I didn't even read this thing till yesterday. Uh, but a week ago, uh, I was sharing about how we're not the body, you know, and, you know, Hindus, Buddhists, you know, all the Eastern tradition. They say that, that when you die, meaning when you leave the body, your consciousness leaves the body, and we go from one body to the next, but we drop the physical body, however our consciousness moves from that experience, from one body to the other. Um, so I just, I find it funny. Uh, another thing Dr. Lin says, uh, but not so long ago, scientists became involved with physics, quantum mechanics, and astrophysics. This explosive mixture has given birth to the new theory of biocentrism, which the professor has been preaching ever since. Biocentrism teaches that life and consciousness are fundamental to the universe. It is, it is a consciousness that creates the material universe, not the other way around, uh, which we know also is true. Um, that the consciousness, the super consciousness, the source, is where we all came, that cosmic ocean. We are drops from the cosmic ocean. Uh, and once we achieve that ultimate experience of liberation, we will join back with that consciousness. We won't take birth, death again in the human body. And I want to cite one of my favorite uh, verses from the Bhagavad Gita. Um, for many years, I've loved these verses. There's um, in chapter 2, verses 20 through uh, 20, uh, I'm sorry, 20 through 25. I can read those. I won't read the Sanskrit right now. Uh, 
Uh, but I'll read just the uh, translation. So verse, it starts as chapter 2, verse 20, in Sankhya Yuga, from Sri Krishna. Uh, the self is neither born, nor does it ever die. After having been, it never ceases not to be. It is unborn, eternal, changeless, and ancient. It is not killed when the body is killed. O Parata, how can man slay or cause others to be slain when he knows it is to be indestructible, eternal, unborn, and unchangeable? So that is uh, the 21st verse. Then the 22nd verse of chapter 2. Just as man casts off his worn-out clothes and puts on new ones, the self casts off worn-out bodies and enters new ones. And then verse uh, chapter 2, verse 23. Weapons do not cleave the self. Fire does not burn it. Water does not moisten it. And wind does not dry it. And 24. The self cannot be broken, nor burnt, nor dissolved, nor dried up. It is eternal, all-pervading, stable, immovable, and ancient. So then... Uh, the fifth or the twenty-fifth verse is the self is said to be unmanifest, unthinkable, and unchangeable and able. Knowing this to be such, you should not grieve. So uh, Arjuna is, you know, basically feeling a little bit of incompletion and uh, a little bit definitely not wanting to do his duty of going out and, and killing uh, the opposite side during the war. Uh, but but uh, Sri Krishna gives him that understanding about the body and about consciousness. Uh, so it's very beautiful. It always has stuck out in my mind. And so then when I'm reading this article about these quantum physics guys saying this, what's been thousands of years ago recorded in Hinduism, in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, and that's only in the Bhagavad Gita, even before that, tens of thousands of years ago in the Vedas and Agamas, the same thing has been written. You can look at the uh, Upanishads, Kano and uh, the Kano Upanishads and all. It tells all about those things, about how the Atma, the self, is untouchable and eternal. Uh, so no matter how many b births and deaths we have in the physical body and mind itself, that part is unchanging. Even day to day, we have little births and deaths with our thoughts, with our process. Even when we go to sleep and wake up, that can be can considered a birth and death cycle. So we're always changing and always new. So even within the body now, we can experience that connection with the consciousness. The more we start to slow down our thoughts and reduce our thoughts, then we can get closer and closer to that space, that consciousness space. Because our thoughts is what is blocking us from getting into that consciousness space. So as a result, we get into that confusion. So I just find it very nice and, and I always enjoy when I can take what Swamiji is teaching us and what the ancient texts, the ancient sacred scriptures of Hinduism have been saying for so long. And it's almost in a way funny because it's common knowledge. If you go to any Hindu who's done a little bit of, you know, reading of scriptures, like that understanding is there. But these people are acting like it's some new thing. And it's, you know, all of a sudden it's, it's just come out of nowhere and they've made this big giant discovery. So anyway, you know, We'll find that happening more and more, and the Swamiji uh, shares these things with us more and more. We'll come up with the scientific evidence to prove it, and real scientific evidence, uh, not some cooked up ideas from some guy who probably or just read some Vedas and Agamas and feels like, oh, they must be so old that nobody's ever read them again, and nobody knows about them now. I don't know. Uh, but it's interesting. All I can say, well, at least they're bringing it out now. I mean, maybe you can uh, say that there's a little bit of a positive, that the ideas are starting to come into the, like, Western world and the scientific community. But they just need to simply uh, start watching some of Swamiji's set songs, and they'll be like, oh, and they'll probably feel a little bit 
stupid. <laughs> Who knows how much, I don't know. Hopefully they didn't spend so much time researching and wasting their time. When all they need to do is get into Hinduism and start watching Swamiji's videos, start listening to him, come to some of his programs, and look at a real life experience of what they're talking about in their new theories, their quote unquote new theories. Um, so anyway, uh, it's been a pleasure to share this with you today. So thank you for watching and don't get caught up in biocentrism. <laughs> Understand that it's the ancient tradition of Hinduism that is already giving the truths and the reality of existence of the cosmos to the world. Thanks for watching.